Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to UEFA's headquarters here in Lyon for the draw of the league phase of the 2022-23 UEFA Nations League. This will be the third edition of the competition, which has proven to be a resounding success by giving teams from across our continent the chance to play meaningful matches against opponents of similar ability. The reigning champions are, of course, France, who won a thrilling final against Spain in October. We'll get to the draw in a few minutes, but before doing so, we have some special awards to hand out. Under the banner of its Respect campaign, UEFA has presented the Equal Game Awards since 2018. These awards recognize individuals or football organizations who have acted as role models in promoting diversity, inclusion and accessibility in football. An independent equality and diversity jury composed of 10 key stakeholders have elected the winners. Now, unfortunately, because of the fact that this draw is taking place behind closed doors, this year's winners couldn't travel and attend the event. However, we're still celebrating their achievements. Let's take a look at the projects that have won the latest edition of the UEFA Equal Game Awards. idea came from the time when I was in refugee centers in both Norway and Denmark. I felt there is a need for activities for women. We have to help each other to change the mindset for women to say that enough is enough. If anyone wants to, to accept us, they have to accept us with our dreams. Football helped me to be a better human being to also stand for something greater than just the game. Football has changed my life and can do so in many others. Solidarity, respect, equality, passion. Let's act together and bring these values to every single place. Let's help through our beloved sport, because in fact, it's not just a sport, but a tool for social change and integration. accessible and inclusive environment where everybody feels welcome. No matter who you are, where you're from or who you love, no matter the color of your skin or which physical and mental abilities you bring, we value those differences as a virtue that makes our football stronger. Some amazing projects there, no doubt about it. And now we're going to celebrate each one. The first of our three awards has gone to Khalida Popal, a former member of the Afghanistan women's national team who fled to Denmark as a refugee over a decade ago. She's been fighting for women's rights and equality in sport. This year, she worked tirelessly to successfully evacuate the team's players from Afghanistan, therefore saving their lives. Let's hear from Khalida, who recorded a short message for us. Thank you, Eva, and everybody who are involved in recognition of my work and for equality and inclusion through sports. Thanks for our recognition and thanks for giving me the award. It is such a pleasure and honor receiving this award. Unfortunately, due to COVID, I'm not able to travel and be on site, but I want to thank everybody who are involved in decision making for giving me this award. Thank you so much. Thank you, Khalida, for all the work you do. Now, our second award goes to Juan Mata for inspiring and bringing the football family together through the Common Goal Initiative, which inspires people in the football industry to give 1% of their salaries to charitable causes. Mata's efforts are ensuring that more underprivileged children around the world have an opportunity to pursue their dreams of playing football. Let's now hear from Juan. I am really pleased to receive this UEFA Equal Game Award on behalf of every single member of Common Goal. And I wanted to thank UEFA for acknowledging the work that we are doing with the movement, and especially to Alexander Seferin, its president, for his personal commitment to Common Goal. I also wanted to emphasize on the importance of team effort and our collective approach in order to try to maximize the potential of football to tackle the many challenges that society is facing nowadays 
and I want to encourage everyone that is part of the professional football industry to join our movement, Common World Movement, to try to create better conditions to many people around the world. Congratulations, Juan. Our final Equal Game Award has been won by the German Football Association for promoting football as a sport for everyone and for its enduring commitment to diversity and inclusion in the game. The DFB has been running numerous inclusion projects for years. They were one of the first member associations to actively support refugees and to set up a national contact point for LGBTQI plus issues in football. From the DFB, first Vice President Dr. Reiner Koch and Vice General Secretary Heike Ulrich have sent us the following message. Dear UEFA, dear President Severin, thank you so much for this really prestigious award we received today. We feel honored to receive this award for our efforts to make football more inclusive and accessible for everybody. The DFB is convinced that football is a strong force to foster social cohesion. This force needs to be nourished. Today's award is for all the people in the German FA working for an equal game, which nowadays is more important than ever. Well done, Kalida, Juan, and the German Football Association as well for winning these awards. Now it's back to the main event of today, the draw for the league phase of the 2022-23 UEFA Nations League. The second edition concluded this past October with a final four tournament played in Milan and Turin in Italy. And what an occasion it was. When the dust settled, it was France celebrating their first ever victory in the competition. Italy and Spain, two serial trophy winners. And there are jumps of joy for Spain right now. Now it's the turn of Belgium and France, the world champions. <laughs> Two of Europe's finest, two of the world's finest. At the bow, puts Spain in front. Oh, that's magnificent! What a goal by Karim Benzema! Mbappe, and France have done it. The world champions now have their hands on the UEFA Nations League trophy.
Some great moments there from last season, and congratulations once again to France. Now, as we move closer to the draw, I would like to welcome onto the stage two former players who graced the European stage for their respective clubs and countries during their distinguished careers. I'm happy to be joined here by former French international Robert Pires and Gaitska Mendieta, who, of course, played for Spain. Gentlemen, Great to see you. I know you were opponents. Good evening. During, Good evening. during your careers, but tonight you're going to team up to help us in the Nations <laughs> League draw. I have to ask you about this competition because it's a, it's a recent one. It gives teams from across Europe an opportunity to battle with opposition of, of similar uh, strength. How have you seen the competition over the first two editions? And would you have liked to have played in it as, a, as a, if you were still in action today? Yes, uh, of course. <laughs> yes, definitely, because uh, during the last uh, competition in Italy, I saw the great uh, games, uh, great players, uh, great uh, teams. And I like and happy because uh, some, some, of, some of the teams, uh, they put a good uh, spirit, a good commitment on the, on the field. And um, yeah, the, all the team it was very uh, uh, equal, uh, same, uh, same level. So, so that's why, you, you know, Pedro, when you have a competition like this, at the end you have a trophy. And the most mm. important mm. is to leave the trophy. So that's why the National League is very, very good. What are your thoughts, Gaiska? Well, certainly uh, the opportunity for players and, and nations to win another trophy. But I think also uh, having the opportunity to you not know, have the friendly games, which won in as exciting as probably in the beginning. So that brings uh, professional and, and active football in every single game. The opportunity for countries that normally don't have the opportunity to play mm. against big national teams with a lot of history in football. So brings that also closer to football fans from countries that, that didn't have the opportunity. Uh, so of course, yeah, as a, as a player, we would love to, to play that. <laughs> Robert, when you were with the French national team, yes. um, you managed to celebrate the World Cup Euro double. Now France won the World Cup Nations League double. Um, is it possible to compare these, these two teams and their star players? Uh, well, sometimes it's very difficult to compare, you know, teams, uh, manager or, or players. But I think at the end, yeah, we are very similar because we won. <laughs> This is all, of, yeah. all of the, the <laughs> title. So, so that's why very, we are France. We are very, uh, you know, competitive. So when you put a, a competition like a National League, yeah, we, we want to leave the trophy. You, uh, you fight for, for this. Of course, all of, all of the team is very, uh, very competitive, like uh, Spain, because mm. it was a superb uh, yeah. final in, uh, in Milan. So, so I think, yeah, if you compare the France 98 and France uh, uh, 18, yeah, <laughs> uh, we are very similar because the team was perfect. And a cruel question for you. Yes. If you had to pick one star player <laughs> from those two teams, who would it be and would it come down to, to Zidane versus Mbappé? Who would you pick? <laughs> I think, Pedro, you know my answer, <laughs> no? <laughs> I think the world wants to know your answer. Zinedine Zidane is, is uh, yeah, uh, one of the best in the, in the world. So for me, it was, uh, yeah, a privilege to, uh, to play with him, especially with the, with the national team. And we, yeah, we won some titles together. Well, thanks for being honest and direct and giving <laughs> us that answer. Gaitska, obviously Spain came up a little bit short in the uh, uh, Nations League final, but still new generation with Luis Enrique. <clears throat> How do you see this, this national team now and, and, and all this young talent? Well, with um, great excitement, because I, I think over the, the time that Luis Enrique took over, we've seen so many young players coming through. Uh, all of them like really uh, living to the expectations that a country like Spain after winning the trophies uh, has had. Uh, so much talent and hunger. I think at the end of the day, like, like Robert was saying, you want the players to, to have that desire and that passion. And I think we have that. And Luis Enrique is brought back that to, to Spain. So hopefully we, we're getting closer and closer. I mean, final is final. <laughs> hopefully next one we leave, we leave a trophy. Gentlemen, our team on stage is not complete because uh, next I'm going to invite to join us the UEFA Deputy General Secretary, Giorgio Marchetti, who will conduct the draw. We're going to shift our formation here. Yeah. And Giorgio is going <laughs> to come in the Giorgio. middle and play center forward, I guess. Giorgio. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, thank Hello. you very much, Pedro. Good evening to all of you at home, ladies and gentlemen. The UEFA Nations League has uh, <clears throat> established itself as an integral part of the international match calendar and has been embraced by players, coaches and fans. We are now in our third edition of this competition, which gives uh, national associations of similar strength the chance not only to test themselves against one another, but also to play competitive matches rather than friendlies with promotion and relegation at stake. Congratulations uh, to France, who became the second <coughs> winner of the UEFA Nations League after a thrilling tournament in Italy 
which saw each of the four matches decided just by the difference of one goal. This uh, really was a fantastic advert for men's national team football with high levels of skill, passion, commitment and free-flowing football from all the teams that took part – France, Spain, as well as the hosts Italy and Belgium. Interest uh, from the fans was reflected in the record television audiences. Overall, there was an increase of 30 percent in the overall uh, live match uh, television audience compared to the inaugural edition. Over the course of uh, two final four tournaments so far, 2019, which was won by Portugal, and this year's edition, we have seen eight different teams compete, which shows the level of competition within our continent. I would like to finish by wishing all 55 of UEFA member associations the best of luck when the tournament starts in June 2022. But before we find out who will play who in which group, it's time now for the draw procedure. Fifty-five teams will participate in the UEFA Nations League and they have been divided into the four leagues according to their results in the previous edition. League A will have four pots with four teams each. League B will also have four pots with four teams. And the same for League C. League D has one pot with four teams and a second pot with three teams. The draw is done league after league, starting with League D. This will be followed by Leagues C, B and A. Within each league, the draw will start from the lowest pot to the highest pot. Drawn teams are allocated to the groups in ascending order from groups 1 to 2 in the case of League D. Draw conditions apply. Ukraine and Russia cannot be drawn into the same group. The following six pairings fall under the excessive travel restrictions and only one such pair can be drawn into one group. As a rule, teams are allocated to the groups in ascending order. When draw conditions apply, the computer used to assist with the draw will indicate the group available. The computer calculations will need to anticipate all possible scenarios to prevent any deadlock situation. Every pot will be emptied before proceeding to the next pot, and every group will be composed of one team from each pot. The draw starts with League D. The first team is drawn, and the team assigned to Group D1. A second team is drawn, and the team assigned to Group D2. The remaining team from pot 2 is assigned to D1. The draw continues with pot 1, assigning the first drawn team to group D1, and so on until pot 1 has been emptied. The draw for League C starts with pot 4, containing 4 teams. The drawn teams are assigned to groups C1 to C4 in ascending order. The draw continues with pot 3 and the same procedure applied to pots 2 and 1. The draws for Leagues B and A will follow the same procedure as League C. The league phase will be played over six match days from June to September 2022, and the third UEFA Nations League edition culminates with the finals in June 2023, played between the four group winners of League A. All right, we hope all of that is clear. As we saw in the technical video, we'll now start the draw with League D. Let's take a quick look at the teams who are <clears> going <throat> to be competing in it.
So now we know the teams. It's over to Giorgio to kick off the draw officially. Thank you very much. And I will need uh, the uh, kind uh, assistance of Gaiska to draw the teams, uh, three teams, of the spot number two of this group, of this league, uh, into their respective groups. We have Latvia, San Marino, Andorra. And we start uh, with uh, group uh, D1. Latvia. Where Latvia is uh, the first team drawn. Now, we're almost ready to draw. Please, the guys, come tell us which team is now going into Group D2. San Marino. That's San Marino. So San Marino D2, and uh, one only ball is left uh, in this spot uh, to be allocated uh, to D1, uh, to a group of four teams. Andorra. Andorra. So Andorra, together with Latvia, are the two teams for the moment drawn into D1. We go now, and uh, Robert Pires is now giving us his kind assistance. So <laughs> I'm very lucky to be surrounded by the two legends. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kazakhstan or Moldova? Kazakhstan or Moldova. I remind you that these two teams will have to play their play out for, uh, to avoid relegation to League D. So the loser of this play out will uh, play in uh, Group D1. Now, this next team is ready to be allocated to Group D2. Cyprus or Estonia. And this is the other pair which will play playouts. So Cyprus or Estonia, Group uh, uh, D2. Now we are ready. We are ready for the second last team of League D. Malta. And Malta, due to the conditions of the draw, will go to Group D2 because uh, it's uh, a condition of uh, excessive uh, travel distances. So to, with uh, Kazakhstan and Andorra, only a pair, a couple of these teams can fall in the same groups. That's the reason why Malta is joining D2. Liechtenstein. And to complete uh, this league, we have Liechtenstein. So Group D1 is now completed with Liechtenstein, one between Kazakhstan, Moldova, Andorra, and Latvia. All right, so League D has been set for the next season. Let's have a look at those two groups. In Group 1, we have Liechtenstein, Kazakhstan or Moldova, Andorra and Latvia. In Group 2, in League D, it's Malta, Cyprus or Estonia and San Marino. We can now move on and take a look at the national associations who will be competing in League C. That's the lineup of 16 teams in League C, and uh, we'll find out now who they will be playing next season. Giorgio, back to you. Yes, of course, and back again to Gaiska. We shuffle uh, pot four, composed of, uh, again, the pairs, Kazakhstan, Moldova, Cyprus, Estonia. This time the winners will uh, 
B will feature in this league, and Gibraltar and the Faroe Islands. Faroe Islands. And the first team drone uh, is from uh, deep north, Faroe Islands. Faroe Islands go to group C1, please. Cyprus or Estonia? Cyprus or Estonia, the winner of uh, this uh, playout tie, uh, goes uh, to group uh, C2. Another one, please. For C3. Kazakhstan or Moldova? The winner between Kazakhstan and Moldova will uh, participate uh, in uh, League C, group 3. Only one team, and uh, yes. this job is over. Only part Why of now? the job, don't worry. We have something more to give you. <laughs> Gibraltar. Gibraltar. Finally, Gibraltar Group uh, C4. And uh, after allocating the four teams of Pot 4, now we will allocate the four teams of Pot 3. So we'll see, we'll, uh, we will see some uh, uh, combinations already like we've seen for League D. Lithuania. Lithuania. So Lithuania C1 together with the Faroe Islands for Lithuania. And um, next um, is the team for Group C2. Kosovo. Kosovo versus uh, Cyprus or Estonia. Now we go, we move on to group C3 <coughs> with two teams left, uh, Georgia and Azerbaijan. 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 So Azerbaijan uh, participating in group C3 with the winner of uh, the uh, Thai Kazakhstan versus Moldova. And finally to complete uh, the Half of the groups. Now we have Georgia. Georgia with Gibraltar in C4. Let's move on. That's the pod number two, which includes uh, the likes of uh, Greece, Belarus, Luxembourg, and North Macedonia. Luxembourg. And we start with Luxembourg. So Luxembourg is uh, so joining Lithuania and Faroe Islands in Group C1. For Group C2, where we have already Kosovo and the winner between Cyprus and Estonia, now Greece. Greece. Kosovo and uh, Cyprus or Estonia. <coughs> Group C3. Belarus. Belarus. Belarus uh, together with Azerbaijan and uh, Kazakhstan of Moldova. Belarus. Uh, only la the last team left is uh, North Macedonia. Of course, North, North Macedonia. They are uh, coming from uh, excellent performances this year. They played in the Euro 2020, and they achieved also the playoffs for the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Technique. The last uh, four teams, Turkey, Slovakia, Bulgaria, Northern Ireland. Turkey. Turkey. Turkey is now uh, completing Group C1, where they will find Luxembourg, Lithuania, and the Faroe Islands. Another World Cup playoff participant, Turkey. Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland uh, is now uh, accommodating in, uh, in Group C2, where they find Greece, Kosovo, and uh, Cyprus or Estonia. Slovakia. Slovakia, Belarus, Azerbaijan, and Kazakhstan or Moldova will compete in Group C3. And uh, the last team uh, left uh, to join the Group C4 is uh, 
Bulgaria, obviously Bulgaria, which will uh, find the opposition of North Macedonia, Georgia and Gibraltar. This way we have uh, come to the end also of uh, League C. We have. We've got the four groups in <coughs> League C. Sixteen teams have been drawn. Let's uh, 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 recap the results here. Group 1 in League C will have Turkey, Luxembourg, Lithuania and Faroe Islands. It'll be Northern Ireland, Greece, Kosovo and Cyprus or Estonia in Group 2. It's Slovakia, Belarus, Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan or Moldova in Group 3. And Bulgaria, North Macedonia, Georgia and Gibraltar in Group 4. We are moving on to League B. Let's take a look at the teams who will be competing in it. All of the teams competing in League B will have the same aim of trying to make it to League A, and that of course includes the elite of European national team football. We'll find out what their paths are now with uh, Giorgio's help and also Gaitska and Hover, of course. Thank you, Pedro. <coughs> Tension mounts as we are approaching <coughs> now League B. <coughs> we start with the teams of Slovenia, Montenegro, Albania and Armenia. That's spot four of the League B. Armenia. Armenia. <coughs> so first team drawn, Group B1, Armenia. Freshly promoted to League B, <coughs> as the other teams in this uh, pot. Albania. And uh, Albania is going into Group B2, so Armenia in one and Albania in two. Let's see, group B3. Montenegro. That's Montenegro. Montenegro group B3. Only two goals conceded in six games of uh, the last UEFA Nations League by Montenegro, <coughs> which gained a good promotion to League B. Slovenia. And finally, Slovenia joins Group B4. So, four teams are allocated, and I turn to the other side to prepare the four balls for Robert, who will start delivering the opponents in the various groups. So, first opponent for Armenia. Republic of Ireland. Republic of Ireland, uh, B1, uh, together with Armenia. Now, another team. Israel. Israel. <coughs> Israel joins Albania in Group uh, B2. Now, for B3, where we have Montenegro, two teams, Romania, Serbia. 
Romania. At the end, it is Romania, which will face off uh, Montenegro. And um, Robert, please open the last ball, but uh, it will not be a surprise. <laughs> Serbia. As it is, of course, uh, Serbia joining Slovenia in this group. So, so while we are halfway through League B, <coughs> now the four other teams are ready to be uh, to join the groups: Finland, Norway, Scotland, and Russia. Scotland. Scotland, uh, the first, uh, and uh, Scotland obviously goes into Group uh, B1 together with uh, the. Uh, Neighbors of uh, Republic of Ireland and uh, a bit of a, of a longer trip uh, to uh, to join Armenia. Russia. Now it's the turn of Russia, which will uh, compete against uh, Israel and Albania in uh, B2. Finland. Finland uh, is uh, going into Group B3, together with uh, Romania and Montenegro. <coughs> and uh, finally, to finish the job, <laughs> Tough. we need uh, to see this name. Norway. Which is, of course, the name of Norway. And uh, Norway uh, takes a position in uh, Group B4, where they will find uh, Serbia and Slovenia. So only one pot uh, to complete uh, the uh, three quarters of our job. These are now the teams of Ukraine, Sweden, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Iceland. First team for Group B1. Ukraine. Ukraine. So Ukraine, Scotland, Republic of Ireland, and Armenia is the lineup of uh, Group uh, B1. Ready to see the lineup, the full lineup of Group B2 now. Iceland. Iceland. So Iceland, uh, Russia, Israel, and Albania is uh, the full composition of B2. Now for B3. Bosnia, Herzegovina. Together with Finland, Romania, and Montenegro, Bosnia-Herzegovina now completes Group B3. Only one is left, and we will be ready to move on to League A. Sweden. Obviously, it is Sweden, so it will be a Scandinavian Balkan challenge between Sweden, Norway, mm. Serbia, and Slovenia. And that's all for League B. That is indeed. Let's wrap it up looking at all the <coughs> four groups that have just been drawn. In Group 1 in League B, we will have Ukraine, Scotland, Republic of Ireland, and Armenia. It's Iceland, Russia, Israel, and Albania in Group 2. In Group 3, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Finland, Romania, and Montenegro. And in Group 4, Sweden, Norway, Serbia, and Slovenia. It is now time to move on to the final draw of the day. That's, of course, League A. There's some real heavyweights in this league, not just of European football, but world football as well.
Now the goal for all of these teams in League A will be, of course, trying to qualify for the finals. So now I'll pass the floor one final time to Giorgio, Gaitska and Robert. And Gaitska and Robert will actually be drawing their own nations now in this league. I think Robert, probably. <laughs> but OK, <clears throat> it is now the time when the draw reaches its climax. It's all the, the teams of league A, all the top ranked teams are here. Plenty of big names. And that's your turn. So you will take responsibility for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you. Well, first one, Austria. Austria. So, Austria first team drawn, Austria group A1. But for the moment, there is nothing serious, of course, because there are no opponents. <laughs> we'll see. Austria. Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Czech Republic group A2. <coughs> you see how many participants in the playoffs? we have between League A and League B. Hungary. Hungary is now joining Group A3. After a second successive promotion, Hungary is now participating in Group A, in League A, sorry. They started uh, in the first edition in League C. Wales. And finally, Wales. So Wales uh, is uh, accommodated uh, in Group A4. Now the, uh, <laughs> the going is, is really getting tough. Robert, to you. Croatia. Croatia. So Croatia is uh, drawn in Group A1, where they will find uh, Austria. So Croatia versus Austria in this group. The other three teams, I remind you, England, Poland, and Switzerland. Switzerland. Now Switzerland, uh, which is going to Group A2, the Switzerland finds Czech Republic in A2. A team now for Group A3. England. England, uh, Hungary is uh, the uh, are the two teams uh, which are drawn in Group A3. And uh, only one name needs uh, to appear. We will see it in a second. Poland. Which is the name of Poland. Uh, Obviously, Poland and Wales uh, are 50% of the teams of Group A4. With this, <coughs> we go immediately ahead uh, with the next uh, four teams to be drawn, uh, which are Portugal, Netherlands, Denmark, and uh, Germany, starting with A1. Denmark. Denmark. Croatia and Austria are the three teams so far drawn in Group A1. Another one. Portugal. Portugal. Portugal uh, is now finding Switzerland and the Czech Republic in their group. Germany. Germany. Germany, England, the European Classico. So <laughs> Germany, England together with Hungary. So very tough competition here. We can announce it already. Netherlands. And finally, the Netherlands with Poland and with Wales will compete in Group A4. Only four names, but uh, heavy names. <coughs> Over. Be careful because you need maybe not to <laughs> no go pressure, back to your no, country. Robert, no. <laughs> Warming up the <laughs> Depending on what you will do. France. So France, uh, together with Denmark, uh, with uh, Croatia, and with Austria, is uh, featuring Group A1. That's the final composition. 
we have uh, to complete A2, 3 and 4, and we start uh, with uh, group A2. Spain. Spain. Spain is now finding uh, their neighbors of Portugal, Switzerland and Czech Republic. Two teams left, Italy and Belgium. Let's see who will be the lucky winner of Group A3, winner of this position, eh? of course not winner of the group. Italy. So Italy Ooh. will uh, compete uh, against Germany and against England. That's uh, the final lineup, and Hungary, of course. That's the final lineup of Group A3. And uh, the last name that we want to see is uh, the name of uh, Belgium. Belgium, a derby with Netherlands and uh, Poland uh, and Wales. Uh, the other two teams in this group, uh, we have four fantastic groups for League A. We do indeed, and we wouldn't expect anything else in this competition and in League A. All 55 national associations now drawn. Let's have a look at the 16 in League A and wrap up this league in Group 1, France, Denmark, Croatia and Austria. In Group 2, Spain, Portugal, Switzerland and the Czech Republic. In Group 3, it's Italy, Germany, England and Hungary. And in Group 4, Belgium, the Netherlands, Poland and Wales. That does bring this edition of the draw for the UEFA Nations League to a close. I would like to thank our special guests, Robert Pires and Gaitska Mendieta. Also, of course, Giorgio Marchetti. We're all looking forward to June when the third edition of this great tournament will kick off. From all of us, it's goodbye for now from the House of European Football here in Lyon. Our best wishes for the holiday season. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Take care. Yeah.